So as we liberated the gases from water, we are now resubjecting those liberated gases to even a higher pulse voltage frequency. We are restricting the amps and allow voltage to take over to perform its work. We are now injecting laser energy into process to aid the ejection of the electrons. 3.30. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go on. One? Yeah, we'll go on. Okay. Yeah. So basically what I'm doing now is that I am now taking the combustible gas ions and I'm now bringing it into subcritical state. I've pulled off the electrons. I have now subjected to photon energy. And what I'm now doing is taking combustible gas atoms and putting them into subcritical state. In order to do this, I had to invent now the electron extraction circuit. When I developed the electron extraction circuit, which I shut off the flow of amps and voltage to take over to eject the electrons, I now come up with an alternate way of redirecting those liberated negative electrons. And as a result, if you would apply the B plus across a filament of a light bulb, then those negative charge electrons will go into the filament and to react to produce heat in the form of light energy. But what I'm now illustrating to you that not only are we setting up the condition to bring about the hydrogen fracturing process, we are now producing electrical energy simultaneously, which that electrical energy now can be recycled back in electronic circuits to aid the voltage intensifier circuit to perform the electrical polarization process. This is an example now that when you inject the combustible gas atoms to laser energy, it causes the electrons to go to a higher energy state which now allows electrons to be ejected from the oxygen atom, as an example. And by subjecting it to the pulse voltage frequency, we pull away the electrons, and then we consume the electrons and not allow the electrons to go back into the process. So we are now keeping the combustible gas atoms into a very critical state. To do this, we now develop what is called the hydrogen gas gun technology. Now, Basically, what we are doing is we know that, in fact, that when you ignite hydrogen and oxygen gases, it will release the thermal explosive energy up to two and a half times that of gasoline. The scientific question that was to be asked at this particular point is that what happens during thermal gas ignition of hydrogen if you could prevent the formation of the water molecule from occurring? In other words, if you could prevent the formation of the water molecule from occurring, and could not reach stable state, then in fact you, that explosive energy would keep continuing to be released from the process until such time either a new atom structure is formed or that an implosion effect and release pure energy. Now since the energy problem has been occurring in the scientific world, uh, Livermore Laboratories has been trying to use a hydrogen fusion, as you know, by taking hydrogen and subjecting it to high temperatures and high pressures around 10 million degrees and putting it in an electro electromagnetic bottle and trying to release its energy. Another process which was very successfully demonstrated in the university environment was called the muon process. Now we know that if you will decrease the mass of an atom, it must release its energy. And under the muon process, they took a muon, which is twice the size of an electron, and caused the hydrogen atom to accept the muon and reject its natural electron. Now, once that has occurred, then decay comes about on the muon, and once the muon decays, then the hydrogen atom no longer stays in, re in existence, and the energy that's there to hold the electron in its outer orbit is no longer there, and therefore, under the law of physics, everything must be stabilized and therefore releases tremendous amounts of energy. What we are now doing is setting a subcritical mass of combustible gas atoms, decreasing its mass size, and allowing and preventing the formation of the water molecule from occurring to release a phenomenal amount of energy. Now, this is an example of taking a hydrogen gas gun and putting it on top of the resin cavity. Matter of fact, the hydrogen gas gun can be reduced down to the size of a spark plug or the gas injector system of an F-15 or an F-18 and literally fly an F-18 or a 15 on the atomic power of water. This is some of the electronic circuit interfacing that gave us the patents worldwide on this technology. 
Now, to give you an example of the hydrogen fracturing process to prevent the formation of the water molecule is that Ike and I are on a basketball court and he's the hydrogen atom and I'm the big oxygen atom. Now, I'm eight times bigger than he is, right? Now, what I've done is I've zapped at Ike with laser energy. And because I had hit him with laser energy, his electron migrates farther away from the nucleus. And as a result of that, the electrical attraction force between that electron and nucleus becomes weakened. So he is now in a weakened state. But I am the big oxygen atom, and I got four missing electrons, and then the law of physics says I want to stabilize, and I need some electrons. But I'm also injected with laser energy, and I'm in a highly energized state, and that ener absorb laser energy, and the nucleus is preventing me from allowing me to go back to stable state. So I have an abnormal state, I'm in a subcritical state, and then I am being subjected to thermal ignition, and so as a result, the hydrogen oxide atom seeks to come together to form the water molecule, but it is not in stable state. And as a result of that, an avalanche effect occurs, and once that takes place and stabilization cannot occur, you start to release thermal explosive energy of a fantastic magnitude. This process in the hydrogen fracturing process, the potential yield is 2.5 million barrels of oil per gallon of water. And since there is no neutron interreaction in the process, it is a very clean process. So we now have the abilities to retrofit the technology to any form of aircraft you so desire, even rocket engines. We can take even the liquid hydrogen and the liquid oxygen subjected to the hydrogen fracturing process and obtain tremendous mock yields where the United States was originally developing a hydrogen powered aircraft to go Mach 25. It is now slated to go Mach 150 in outer space with this type of technology. We now found since voltage stimulates the process, we could not rely on prior generators to give us the economics of reliability to operate both under the seas as well as in space. So all of these electrical generators and the type of technology had to be developed to give us the form of economics. I would tell many people in our presentation that the Lord had given me a phenomenal electrical generator. Here are the following characteristics. It has only one moving part that never wears out. It has no bearings. It has no contact brushes. I can give you single or three-phase or multi-phase power output, and if that don't bother you, I can drop it in the bucket of water and it will never short out. Now, they would start to laugh at me, but once I start showing the technology, they stop laughing. Now, any time you can get three-star generals out of their chairs in 10 minutes in the Pentagon, you're doing something, right? So in order to overcome the opposing electrical, the opposing magnetic fields are associated with rotary electrical generators, the EPG system technology was developed. Basically, the technology centered around... Huh? Okay, how far you want me to go? Hurry up. Okay. You said you had three, so 